lobsters have in common? Well, they're all in this tank, but they're also this brownish color, which is really great if you live in at the bottom of the ocean. Perfect camouflage. But they don't all look like this. Sometimes you get these really crazy color morphs. But why would that be? Let's go talk to someone who studies the science behind photochemistry. So not all lobsters look like this guy. What gives a lobster its color? Well, lobsters live on the bottom of the ocean, and they eat a lot of different things, but one of the things they eat is a red pigment called astaxanthin, and it's a carotenoid pigment, so it's red. The question is, how do they turn a red pigment into all these colors? Even more so, how come you can get a lobster eating a red pigment to look like this? And so what we know is that the shell lays right on top of the skin, and there's actually a couple different layers of the shell, and so the pigment they eat it and it goes through the digestive cavity, moves out to the skin where it's red, and then when it goes up into that first layer shell, it's actually blue, because the proteins twist it and they make it blue. There's an outer layer of shell where the, the, this pigment travels up and from a blue, it actually gets twisted again and it goes to yellow. So there's three layers of coloration in a lobster and what our eye sees is we look through the yellow layer, through the blue layer to the red layer and our eye averages it. So if they have just yellow and blue, we see a green lobster. If they have just yellow and red, we see an orange lobster. If they have all three colors, we see a normal colored lobster. When the pigment is all up in the hard shell, it's, it's actually blue. Because this is a bumpy pigment and the lobsters want to flatten it out. And to flatten it out, it gets twisted by some proteins. And this twisting is called a bathochromatic shift and it turns a red pigment blue. So lobster coloration depends on what they eat, but how is DNA and genetics involved in their coloration? Well, people used to think that um, they, they mated two blue lobsters together and they got all blue babies. So they thought it was a recessive gene, just like you see with dogs and cats and a lot of colors like that. But instead of being a discrete genetic trait, we look at coloration as a continual trait. So if two tall parents had a child, that child would most likely be tall. Two blue lobsters have a baby, it's going to be blue. The blue or the orange color comes from their ability to take this pigment and move it up to their shell and bind it. So lobsters that are very good doing that have babies that are very good at doing that. And that, that's the blue coloration. So I've seen lobsters that are one color on one side and the other side of their body is a totally different color. How do you get that? Um, that's, that is actually genetic. So again, there's this, there's this genetic component to coloration. And those uh, split lobsters are actually really interesting because they're usually also half male and half female. So in the natural world, how rare are these color morphs? Um, the color morphs are actually um, quite rare. We estimate that the blues exist um, about one in every five million lobsters is blue. For this orange color, um, we were actually thinking was, it was less frequent. Um, like maybe one in 10 or 20 million. And then you get yellow lobsters, which are even rarer. And then a white lobster in the wild is actually the rarest. And we, we see about one in every 100 million lobsters. Because it'd be amazing that those would even survive. Survive, right, exactly. 492, 493, 494. Oh, if I'm gonna see a blue one, I'm gonna have to work on this ship for another five or six years. Lobster fishing must be like Christmas. You pull up a crate and you don't know what's going to be in it. It is. You never know what's going to be in there. You can visit cool aquariums like this in most big cities. So visit one nearby and see what kind of cool creatures they have inside. Come on.
then record the odd colors and shapes of three different species, then debate with your friends as to why they evolved and how it helps them adapt to their natural environment, which is another perfect reason to never stop exploring your world.